And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Getting some games are easy decisions, and any expansion for Dominion is very much so. The newest expansion, which is Seaside, and I don't have the box here because I've taken everything out and put it in one box. You can see I have everything at this point bagged. Between the three expansion nows, there are 78 decks, which I keep all stored neatly in here. And then I've taken one card out of each deck and made a stack of decks, per se. And then I draw from this deck 10 different cards, and then we go and look alphabetically in order for those decks. It's a much easier way to take care of the game and to, and to set it up and play. And thank you to the guys on the internet who gave me that idea. But now there's this new expansion, which is not playable by itself. You either need Dominion or Dominion Intrigue to play this with. It gives us 26 more decks and some new and interesting concepts. Does it add to the complexity of the game? A smidge, I would say. It's not too difficult, although I'll show you one thing that we had a little bit of a problem with. But for the most part, it's hilariously fun. Maybe hilariously, just fun is the, is probably the more proper term. I've probably played it 15 times since we've got it so far. Really enjoying these new cards and finding new interactions between them and the cards already in the set. Let's start by talking about what else comes in this game besides uh, the 26 decks of 10 cards each. And they're shown right here. You have three different cards which fit together to make a nice... Uh, panoramic picture that you can use in the background, but these you don't have to use all three of these these cards There's one provided for up to six players each one of these cards matches or one of the one of the new cards that are in the game We have island we have pirate ship and we have native village We also have a pile of gold coins and these are used with the pirate ship and then we have a pile of these Embargo tokens and they are used and I'll show those later on I will say that both these tokens are really nice. They're very high quality, uh, little heavy metal tokens. I love the money ones. My only concern with these tokens are they're only used for one card each. And while I can see the problems in using the same tokens for multiple cards, it almost feels like a bit of a waste, but man, they're really nice. So I don't know that a lot of people are going to complain. But let's talk about each of these three different cards since I have them. Why do they have these things? Island's a neat card because it's worth two victory points, and two victory points for four uh, coins in itself is something that a lot of people are going to be interested in. But it also lets you take a card and another card from your hand and put both of those on the island. So let's say, for example, I have this Duke from Dominion Intrigue in my hand. He keeps cluttering up my hand. I take him with the island, and I stick both of them on the island. They count towards my points at the end of the game, but they're basically out of my hand. It's nice. It's a good way to pull cards out of your hand. So that's what the island does. The pirate ship is a very nasty card. The pirate ship allows you to do one of two things. Either you can attack every other player. Those players turn over the top two cards from their decks. If either one of those cards is a coin, copper, silver, or gold, then you can make them trash it, take it out of their deck. Well, that's bad. Evil. And if you do that, you get a coin on the pirate ship. And you, can get each, uh, there, you could be playing a game with up to six players, but you only get to add one coin as long as you did it to one of the other players. So as you continue to do this, you'll be adding coins onto your board. This gets rid of treasure cards from your opponents and causes them much gnashing of teeth. But also, instead of attacking a player with a pirate ship, you can instead play it as a plus money amount equal to the number of coins on the ship. So let's say I play the pirate ship here. I now have a plus five gold, which is a really powerful card. Uh, pirate ship is, is very interesting. There are ways to fight pirate ships, uh, but you'll have to figure those out on your own. The native village is a card that at the when you play it, and it's interesting because it only costs two, and it gives you two actions. So you'll find that these are bought quite a bit. When a native village is played, you have one, op one of two options. You can either take the top card of your deck and put it on a native village, and you'll continue to do that as the game progresses, or you can play a native village and take all the cards on the deck and put them into your hand. Now, when you do that, you are basically building up a huge hand, and you can look at the cards here at any time you want. So it's a very interesting, unique idea, but the, the, you can use it to either get cards out of your, your deck that you don't want cycling through, 
Although it's much better to pull a killer hand. I've already pulled my whole deck into my hand with this card, and then you can really do some major damage, especially if you have cards that allow you to do extra buys. Very powerful, but it takes a little bit of combos for this card to work properly. Now here's the focus of this set. By the way, I should mention the set of the theme. The theme of the set, uh, Seaside, uh, actually comes through the cards more interesting than the last two sets, I thought, because it just, I don't know, some of the way the cards are played, especially like, for example, the pirate ship. But anyway, these are orange, as you can tell, and these are called duration cards. Duration cards are a neat concept. Basically, on your turn, you play the card, and you get whatever the action card gives you, but then it stays in front of you, and on the following turn, you get some more actions. For example, the merchant ship here says now, and at the start of your next turn, you get two gold. So I play this, and it gives me two gold in this turn. Next turn, I have plus two gold uh, to use on that turn, which is a pretty neat, uh, a pretty neat thing. And if I can continue to play merchant ships, I can pull off some neat combos. Uh, the lighthouse gives me plus one action and plus one gold. And at the beginning of my next turn, it doesn't give me plus one action, but it does give me plus one gold. The fishing village gives me two actions and a gold. And then next turn gives me one action and a gold. And that's basically how these cards work. Some of them are more unique. For example, the tactician, you can discard your whole hand. And then next turn, you get five extra cards, an extra action, and an extra buy. And so some of these will take some uh, interesting ways to combo them. These are the final three cards I'll show you. You'll have to buy the set to look at the rest, or you can look at them online. The Embargo is a very intriguing card because it allows you to put a token on a pile of cards in the middle. You have to trash the card to do so, but anytime someone buys a card from that pile, they have to take a curse card. Uh, you can even eventually you know, get multiple tokens, and so you buy a card, you get curse cards. I played a game against my wife where she was getting a lot of money cards so she could easily buy provinces. So I put a bunch of these on provinces, and then I bought different point cards uh, trying to throw her off and make her vast amounts of money worthless. There are different ways that you can work this embargo card, but it is a double-edged sword because when you put it on uh, an area, you also have to pay to take those cards uh, by, by taking curses into your hands. Then let's look at my two favorite cards from the set. Here's one of them, the treasure map. By itself, a treasure map is completely worthless. But if you ever draw two treasure maps into your hand, and you can manipulate your deck to do so, uh, you can discard or trash both of them, and then you get four gold cards and put them on top of your pile. That is great, and it feels like you found buried treasure. Really fun, bit risky because sometimes it doesn't work out, as I have found out, but when it does work out, it can really be a game changer. And then my favorite card from the set, which is Treasury. Treasury costs five, and it gives you a card, an action, and an extra gold to spend on your turn. Well, what's so special about that? There's already cards like that, for example, the market. But the good thing about the treasury is if you don't buy a victory point card in your turn, then treasury goes back on top of your deck, which means you immediately draw it for the next turn. And if you get several treasuries into your hand, uh, you can really keep going until you buy a point card every time. And it really can uh, zoom through your deck pretty quickly. I really enjoy having this. But there are a lot of neat combos that you can find in this set. I don't really know what I'm doing here, in a sense, because what am I doing? Trying to persuade you to buy this? If you play Dominion, you know you're going to buy this anyway. That's the uh, addictive nature of Dominion. This is a better set, I think, than Intrigue. There's some nasty cards in this one, just like there was in Intrigue, but this one has a much more interesting feel. There's a lot more of this trying to work really interesting strategies. Uh, mixing it with the base set and mixing it with Intrigue can really, I mean, with 78 different cards now, or uh, there's just so many, there's so many different combinations. I'm, I'm very impressed. I'm not sure that the extra cardboard pieces and the coins, uh, that, that could get kind of out of hand, I suppose, if they continue to do this in future sets. I'm not sure how that will pan out. But for now, it's very impressive. Everything still fits in the original box, and there's a ton of variety. If this is where Dominion stopped, I would be very, very satisfied. But we all know we want another set. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.